Okay, so let's start. Uh, first of all, this is the last uh, lecture of the class of the third semester. Uh, it was to, supposed to be accelerator for deep learning. Most of the material was about deep learning. The material of the architecture uh, was less uh, significant, but we'll try at least in the last uh, uh, session to give you more detail about the architecture part and about the research around the architecture that we are doing. So what we are going to do, first of all, the first question is who is dealing with accelerator to machine learning? And the answer is everybody. This is a short list of uh, what people are doing today. And NVIDIA, uh, we saw the Volta, uh, this is mainly for training, but uh, I assume it's on, they will have something for embedded systems. And IBM and Google and Microsoft and Intel and Huawei and Amazon, everybody is doing uh, uh, something about machine learning. Uh, and the main reason, it is not the, uh, just coincidence, but the main reason that the differences between in particular for inference, the main difference between running on general purpose computer and to run on a ASIC, which is very specific to machine learning, can be in order of a, a hundred X to something even few hundred X. Comparing to? Compared to general purpose computer. And comparing to GPU? No. First of all, I, I will have a, a graph in a minute. But if you just compare it to general purpose CPU, so the difference is huge, at least now. We'll see what, are the, what Intel and other companies are doing in order to close the gap. But the, currently, the gap is very, very is huge. About inference and the, the, <laughs> the difference in the learning? Uh, again, I'll uh, address it in a minute. The main difference is that for learning right now, you still need, the algorithm still requires a floating point. And most of the inference is done on binarization of things which are represented as integers. This is the big win. For learning, you still need a, a, a kind of a floating point. I'm saying a kind of, because we'll see that in the TPU, they don't use a really uh, floating point, but they use some custom representation, something which is, uh, nobody really knows exactly what it is, but it is something in between. Uh, uh, but you still need something equivalent to floating point. And the main reason is that from the mathematical point of view, it is very difficult to do the backward uh, 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 in integer, and uh, uh, again, we don't know how to achieve good uh, uh, accuracy uh, for the learning with integers. So for the learning, still people are using floating point. If you are using floating points, so most likely you want to use GPUs or something that has a very good uh, floating point unit. But for inference, we know that for inference, uh, most likely, in most of the cases, at least in vision and in all this kind, so binarization or integer representations are good enough. And if, this, uh, if they are good enough, so you can tailor something uh, uh, to this specific uh, area. So we'll see the TPU uh, of Google is both for uh, 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 inference and learning. We'll address it later on, but all the rest of most of the accelerators today are trying to address the, the uh, inference, and uh, this is the goal of the design. So, again, so the different version of improvements, uh, so it is a, uh, we actually address it in the, uh, this part will mainly focus on inference mainly because last time we talked about learning and about uh, VOTA, etc. So this time we <coughs> mainly focus on the inference part. And again, from the hardware point of view, the inference gives us a, a, a much more possibilities. Although, if people find an efficient way to do learning uh, in, with binarization, then actually everything is open 
for similar techniques for a, a inference as well, a for a learning as well. So the main point is that if we just look at the convolution and ignore all the details, at the heart of the convolution, there is some linear algebra with a lot of nesting loops. And so, so, so 90% of the time, uh, the system is occupied in dual linear algebra operation or multiplication or angle vectors, etc., etc. So if you can have a, a, any good support for linear algebra, so most likely you have a good accelerator for a, a, a machine learning. But this is only part of the story because we always need to remember that we need to, to, to have a smart I.O. and we have a major uh, issue with memory bandwidth and uh, this uh, 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 factor, for example, in GPUs, we know that the main limitation that we have in matrix multiplications are the memory bandwidth and not the computation. So in uh, GPU, what we are doing is to move to blocking algorithms and actually we are doing it in other uh, 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 architectures as well. So it is not just a matter of computation. You always need to balance the system for memory bandwidth, the algorithms that know how to do blocking and to do double buffering in order to move things around in parallel, the DMA and computation, etc. And you need to balance the interface. Yeah. You need to write it yourself or the infrastructure handle this for you? Uh, <coughs> we hope that, uh, again, for regular uh, algorithms, so there are many libraries that are doing it for you. So uh, and this is something that we know in cache memory. Is that in cache memory, you can write a just mass multiplication is the regular multiplication, <coughs> and there is something which is called C2C -C compiler. It actually take it and make it a, 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 a block algorithms, etc. In GPU, the same. Part of the reason that uh, in the architecture they have what they call CPU ID is that the CPU ID can give you the exact parameters of the hardware that you run on. And then the algorithm, the first thing that they are doing is read the CPU ID, say, oh, we are working with this <coughs> a size of caches, and then they make all the multiplication, uh, uh, all the optimization of, on both the algorithm side and uh, 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 on the compiler side, etc. You mentioned the term block algorithm. This is the uh, algorithm that know how to optimize for the memory structure? Yeah, usually block algorithms, the main real, uh, uh, purpose of block, block algorithm is to make sure that you have as many operations on uh, data as possible. Because if you just take a huge matrix and just bring it to the memory, there is no locality. So what you're doing is you divide your uh, a matrix into blocks and then you make sure that you do the operation by block by block, and then when you do block by block, if both blocks are within the memory, so you have repetition, and then you have local act, uh, addresses, and then the caches are efficient. Otherwise, the caches are not very efficient. So this is exactly why you're using the block algorithms. Again, this is something that it is well known uh, uh, in general purpose, then there are algorithms for GPUs, and now there are algorithms for uh, 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 machine learning, etc. But this is only one example. We'll see that most of the, the algorithms right now, they assume that you are writing your system in PyTorch or in Cafe or in, one, uh, or in TensorFlow, and then they give you a set of optimization depending on the specific hardware that you are running. If you like to do something which is not part of the infrastructure, then you need to build your own capabilities. But if you just make sure that you are working within the infrastructure, so it, it is quite uh, 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 easy because the system will do most of the optimization for you. By the way, one of the breakthroughs in machine learning is not just that you have uh, 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 the infrastructure to do it, but the companies uh, like Google or uh, universities start putting in open source or start putting infrastructure that make it quite easy uh, uh, to program the system because otherwise it can be extremely complicated. 
So this is just a, a summary of just to give you the impression how many operations we need to do it. They, they usually the a, a, the, the, the basic uh, parameter of the comparison is a, a bank operation map is a multiply and accumulate, which is very basic. And then if we just look on the different algorithms, so ResNet actually because it goes deep uh, a pipeline, so it ends up with 3.9 gig operations, uh, but a, a pair a, a picture but if we look, for example, on the BGG, it could be a 15.5 gig operation. So it's a huge amount of a, a, a operations, and there are trade off between space, etc. So I will not go into all the details here, but one well, well, question. Uh, this is a number of operations for one picture with the this input is size. A, yeah, this is the input size. For, yes. So, so you, uh, on the upper side, uh, you, you have the picture size. Then for a, a lineup, it's a 28 by 28, but all the rest are around a, a 224 by 224. This is the input size. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, so, so, so this is per picture. And if I want, if my input is uh, larger, so it's growth linearly or yeah, yeah. So, so, so it will grow. But linear or exponential? Uh, I assume that it is more than linear, but I uh, haven't checked. So this is a huge number of uh, instructions. <coughs> and uh, uh, so we need to have special architecture to, to deal with it. So the first thing that people start to see, OK, if you want to accelerate something, what we can accelerate. So they actually measure different algorithms and so on. And the, 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 this is a nice result that just show that most of the time you have something like five or six instructions that you need to accelerate in order to, to, to make it efficient. Which means that it, you can actually put it into special purpose uh, hardware, or you can extend your CPU uh, to do it. And we'll see that, uh, this is the next slide, that both ARM and Intel are working on ISA extensions. What's ISA? ISA is instruction set architecture. Instruction it, set? It is the, 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 the assembly, if you like. Uh, instruction set, OK. Yeah, it's the assembly that you are using. So both companies, and I assume that other companies, are uh, because they have the ability, so they change or they enhance the, the ISA in order to do it in a more efficient way. If you want, so also uh, 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 NVIDIA, since they introduced the, in uh, Volta this uh, 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 matrix uh, multiplication, so in the sense they change the eyes and, and new instructions that they can uh, uh, do the tensor uh, uh, in a more efficient way. This is one way. To do it, and the main reason that you can do it is because all these algorithms are using relatively small amount of instructions. So if you just make them efficient, so you can use it. So why to do it as part of the main process? So because in the main process, so usually you already have the caches, you already have a, a wide access to the memory, so you can use the infrastructure in, in, in the processor. But the point is that the entire Design is not designed for low power, usually. We're talking about Intel, for example. So the entire design is designed for a, a, a out of order and a, a fast a access to memory, etc. that you don't need exactly when you deal with the accelerators, a, a, especially when it is streaming. Yeah. Two questions. At the first, are the targeting the inference market or the learning market? Uh, both, so it depends. If you are uh, uh, in there, for example, uh, most of their chips are for a uh, cloud and servers and so on. Uh, so in this market, this is learning. Not only because uh, right now we'll see later on that both Google and uh, Microsoft are using FPGAs <laughs> or ASIC for search, for example. So in search, what you're doing is inference all the time. 
So, but, but, but uh, the, the, the main usage model uh, for Intel, right now it looks like cars on one end, then it is inference for sure, and cloud on the other hand that you need to support both learning and inference. And the second question, why is I not using uh, to put the accelerator in Anco? Why to, uh, to change the instruction set? Okay, so I'm not saying that they will not put it uh, elsewhere, but usually if you have the ability. The, the, the point is that for a marketing point of view, you want to give added value to, 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 to your processor. So if, for example, in graphics, if they, the, why, why they put graphics card a, a, a engine inside the, the, the processor? Because they said that they know that they cannot actually compete with an additional card, but for additional card you need to pay more, and it has maintenance and power, etc., etc., etc. So their marketing point was if we can support 80% of the market and give good enough solution, so people will not buy additional card uh, for gaming, etc. So this is a marketing strategy. You agree with it? What? You think it's the right strategy? Uh, yes and no, it depends on what you're talking. Because, you see, when you integrate something, your main limitation is not the power. It, it's not the compute power, but the, your main limitation is the thermal. Because the CPU consume power and uh, the GPU with accelerator uh, use power, so you are limited by the overall uh, thermal that uh, you produce. So you cannot compete with, Intel, with a software design with external card that has its own cooling devices. So now, if you want to compete with a, a something that runs on the cloud, this is a different story. You need to be a, a, in a high-end computation. If you want to compete on something on the low end, usually this is the right strategy. So, one of the first uh, 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 users of machine uh, learning was internet. This is amazing because People from the community of vision knew that uh, 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 in order to process uh, things like uh, kinetic doing, which is recognize motions and uh, etc., it takes it, it can takes you days in order to process the, the, the pictures. But then uh, they, they realized that if they use machine learning, so it may take them weeks or months to, to, to train the system, but after you train it, so it is good enough to have a very small accelerator with a, a, a small CPU in order to execute the, 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 a, a, the, the algorithm itself. And this was, <coughs> as far as I know, the first product that actually used machine learning for real-time applications uh, and uh, this was a kind of revolution in the, the, the concept. So, just to compare, this is a, a research that was done, I can't recall where, it, anyhow, I should put the reference here, sorry. So this is a, a work that compared CPU versus GPUs. <laughs> Normalized. So look on the differences, the red and the uh, <coughs> what's the other color? Never mind. The, so we have to try the inference on the GPU or the CPU, and then we have the blue and the light blue or red and light blue red, uh, uh, which are on the C, uh, uh, on the uh, GPU. So if you look, for example, on VGG, you see that these are the differences between the red and the blue. These are the, the differences of uh, the light uh, red and the, or the pink and the, the, the light blue. Uh, uh, this is a huge uh, difference. What's VGG? Uh, one of the Ah, uh, oh, it's a network. Uh, yeah. This is a network. Hmm. So <laughs> or Alex and so on. So, we can see that at least in some of these uh, uh, applications, I see this is linear, this is normalized, but this is a, a, a logarithmic uh, a, a scale. So the, the differences can be huge. 
My comment is that when you, uh, if you uh, don't have the graph here, you will have it later on, when you compare GPUs and FPGA or ASIC, so the FPGAs and the ASIC are much more efficient uh, uh, than the GPUs. And in many sense, uh, this is interesting because okay. NVIDIA for a long time pushed the market to believe that the next big things in computation is machine learning. Because they realize that the GPUs look at these uh, graphs, so they believe that the GPUs are much, much better than CPUs. Only then they realize that the FPGAs are more efficient than uh, uh, GPUs, and now they are in a big, big problem. Because now, at least in inference, and most of the body in the market is going to inference, the, everybody prefer uh, uh, FPGAs and uh, 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 ASICs, and they need to somehow to, to, to find it. Okay, Avi, you, <coughs> you all the time mention FPGA and AC uh, in the same sentence, but from other uh, area, I see that AC is always better than FPGA. Do you expect it to be here the same, that AC will well, be better? First of all, I have a section about it later okay. on, but in general, they are, they, they are similar in the sense that both of them usually when you design ASIC, uh, ASIC is a kind of a, a, a better implementation of FPG, if you like. Yes. Because you, you, in both of them you write uh, something which is similar to, to, to very low at the level of bits, and you have a full control what is going on. Uh, uh, in uh, FPG, you have the flexibility, but you pay with more power, and many times less frequency in ASIC, if you have a very good ASIC team, a design team, so you can actually trim down the power and performance. Uh, we, we, we discuss it uh, later on. Uh, this is a matter of performance versus flexibility that you have. Okay. So the new generation beyond uh, uh, GPUs are uh, ASIC FGA. Uh, we will uh, address it. Later on, but luckily the new generation of uh, neural net algorithms, we can uh, do it in binary level, at least the inference, and this is the big revolution in quantization, and this is what made the big, big, big difference uh, uh, that enable actually to use uh, these devices. So, again, this is point that I will repeat again and again and again. In this field, the real trick or the real smartness is to be able to adjust the algorithms and the hardware and the, 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 the software. The fact that we are using FPGAs is only because we find a way to use the, the quantization or binarization algorithms. Before that, it wasn't even considered as an alternative. And this was happened five years ago when NVIDIA pushed the button. They knew that in FPGA, that in the product, they are much better. But since you have new algorithms, so it changes the picture. It may happen again and again when people come with more sophisticated algorithms, or maybe other users model, and the other users model, you need more floating point, or maybe other structure. Each time that you change the, the, the hardware, you need to change algorithm. Each time that you come with a new and smart way of algorithm, it enables you to uh, go to a different type of design uh, of the hardware. And this is very interesting. Uh, 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 the concept of this is very interesting for the architecture uh, 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 community right now. So, <coughs> few words on using FPGAs. Uh, uh, so, in the past, FPGA considered to be very, very expensive. By the way, it is still now. We are going uh, to, to, to have you new. Know, a stock stem uh, a card, uh, we got it uh, recently from Intel, so each one of them is around $10,000. So it is not something that you will put in your IoT device. On the other hand, when you are using embedded FPGAs, embedded FPGAs are very power efficient and they are very uh, uh, inexpensive. And this is the reason that you'll start seeing uh, I'll give you a few examples. In many <coughs> uh, small scale or IoT devices, they, they move to FPGAs. Again, many people that used to, to, to think about FPGAs 
uh, in the past, they say, yeah, but it, it, this is very power consumption, etc. Not anymore, at least not when you move to embedded uh, uh, PGAs. So, this is a, a picture that I got from uh, Alibaba. Uh, it looks very strange why when I'm talking about a, a, a smart and new a, a, a hardware, so I go to a Chinese company, and the small reason is that Alibaba just announced a small project of $12 billion in the next three years for developing uh, hardware and software algorithms for machine learning. Which means that they are buying companies and they put a lot of effort. Most of their uh, the, uh, 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 knowledge right now, uh, it doesn't mean that they actually develop it, but they are buying companies and uh, they start to be a major, major player uh, in the field. By the way, they have a new center in Tel Aviv. One of the five centers that they are going to spend a lot of money is in Tel Aviv. So, they and Huawei and other Chinese uh, companies start to play a major, major uh, uh, role in this area, and we need to be very careful uh, about what they are doing. So, in their vision, why they put a uh, $12 billion in this area? Because they said that they, they believe that they will have a, a machine learning everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. which means <coughs> they assume that the machine learning will be in the big brain of the cloud. By the way, it can be a phone. It depends on the, the computation oh. the problem that you're using. But also, each one of these devices uh, will use... You, you said fog? Uh, fog. Fog is the, 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 the opposite of the cloud when the small devices are uh, talking to each other directly and you get uh, your computation by point-to-point -point, uh, or a network of uh, sensors. Okay. And so their vision is that they want to put it, it doesn't mean that they will uh, succeed, but they want to put it everywhere. Starting with medicine and the way that you listen to music and the, 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 your camera, etc. For example, in, in camera, why do you need machine learning in camera? You need recognition. Just want to know what you're looking at, what you think pictures. So, so, this is an interesting point, by the way, one of the major failure of a company in, a, a, in a, a cameras was, I think that it was Olympus that had a, 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 a camera that actually look on your uh, eyeball and then made the focus according to where you are looking at. So why it was a great a, a, a commercial a, a failure. And the reason is very simple. Each time that you go out of the beach and you show your wife or a girlfriend that you took a picture and the focus is on somebody else, you're going to be trouble. So now to be more serious, the way that you are doing it, you expose uh, intention. And people don't like this as a kind of privacy. So many times the small details kill a product. And this is serious. This was the serious problem that people were used to use it. Because it just shows intention what you're really focusing at when you take a picture. But anyhow, one of the things that people are using it is if for a, 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 a machine learning today is if you, for example, take a picture that you have a, a difference between the background and the foreground. So you want to balance so you will have a, a same light thing everywhere. So this is a, a, a kind of a, a, a algorithm, and there are many other algorithms that we are using in picture processing today in machine learning. And everywhere, so this is their vision, that everything that you are doing will involve this way or that way in machine learning. And this is why they spend so much money on this area, because they believe that this is the future. But again, it is algorithms, and how the and software you need to, 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 to have them both. So some of the, the innovation that they put recently they announced a, a, this is a company called a Kno, but a, 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 actually it is controlled by Alibaba. So they announced three a, devices. A, one which is a ultra low power, which is a 300 
a milliwatt, uh, sorry, five milliwatt, and uh, it can do machine and they have something which is a little bit more powerful, which is 100 milliwatt, and they have a, a something that can give you 4.4 tera operation per second uh, for uh, less than uh, 300 to wow. uh, 500 milliwatt. Uh, this is all. So when they're talking about the, <coughs> like the KGP 300, they meaning this is over the three. I should check for lambda. Yeah, this is only uh, 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 infrared. So, and the weight are already yeah, hard yeah, coded yeah. inside this solution? Yeah, they are not going into details because it was announced, I think, two weeks ago. So, uh, we don't have too many uh, details. But uh, I assume that, uh, again, the usage model that they are giving is something like uh, cameras and civilian cameras. And uh, to put it as part of your a regular uh, camera just to show you what are the boxes of the faces and to show you uh, where you're focusing at and so on. For all these algorithms, I have it in uh, uh, later on, uh, this kind of uh, algorithms is good enough. So just to, 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 to show you where you're focusing at the faces, uh, uh, the five milliwatt are good enough. To try to, to recognize that uh, uh, well the eyes and so on, so you need a little bit more to recognize who is the person, most likely you, you need the number, so it depends on the usage model. But they, they have all this range of uh, 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 algorithms and how. So, how they achieve it, and this is the interesting part, I will not go into all this, so they said that uh, 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 these are the, uh, the families uh, they, they are using and uh, so they, they have smart uh, application, they have surveillance and their mobile phone, each one has a, a, a different uh, a accelerators. Uh, by the way, the, these types are A55 and A57 are ARM cores, uh, which are being used usually in uh, uh, your cellular, cellular phone, uh, phones. Uh, 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 the Dragon, uh, for example, uh, uses a four uh, Inco arm code, which is the A53 uh, and four out of order arm code, which are the A57. And to this package, actually, they put the accelerator. Yes, this is only the CPU for the host CPU. Yeah, yeah. but, but the, again, this is a, 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 the, the soft design. But again, you can go to <coughs> all, all these cores are arm cores. And, uh, because they are, uh, they, they, they are the machine learning right now is just accelerator. So the accelerator needs to be attached to a, a host. And in this example, they just show the different types of uh, uh, hardware that they attach it to it. And this is the low end uh, uh, arm in core devices. And uh, these are the high end uh, devices to all of them. Yeah, they can put are they available for uh, like uh, samples? What? The, this is ASIC that's available for customers or the... Yeah, uh, uh, again in ARM you can... Uh, ARM in general gives you uh, two types or maybe more. No, I, I'm talking about the uh, Canon, the ABA, the, uh, the I don't know. I don't know. Uh, they just mentioned that they integrated into these devices. Ah, okay. So I don't know if this is their integration or if they offer it as IP that you can integrate it to, to somebody else. Uh, uh, again, this is a fairly new announcement, so there are not too many algorithms. But again, this is something that they uh, claim that they, they, in the uh, end that they <coughs> Related to said that the software is configurable architecture and say that instead of having a huge algorithm to try to solve all the problem, they break it into subsystems. And each subsystem can use a smaller network, etc. My, again, they didn't say it, but my understanding that it is not just the software and what they are really doing is something which is, a, a, I found in some other place, just a, the, the, this picture. This picture is before, is about two or three years old. 
and uh, 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 this is uh, the same company. They are using a something which is called RAMM. I'll show it in the next uh, slide. In RAMM, RAMM, this is a technology that allows it actually to replace FPGA uh, parts like DLLs. So you have an environment. And in this environment, you pre-compile your system in such a way that as long as the interfaces are firm, so you could on the fly replace it with uh, the, 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 a functionality that you need, very similar to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, DLL in the system. And then this is the picture that they can actually find what is the, the optimal a, a solution for the, the application that you are using. Who, who gives this infrastructure? Uh, I said th th this is the company, what the company is using. No, which company? Uh, the the cause, the, the, this is the same company. Ah, this, 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 yeah, this, this is the, today it's Alibaba. But this is the, the, the same company, and uh, uh, again, it is not clear if you are doing it really in real time or your infrastructure is built like an object that you will compose it and say, okay, for a camera civilians, so I'm using this model and it will compile in one way or for another product in another way. But at least the, the original uh, algorithm or the original publication of the RNN allows you actually to do it uh, at runtime. So again, I'm not saying that this is exactly what they are doing, but what they describe it allows you, or maybe we can develop it, but the main idea that you can have a chip that in your chip, there are parts that you can load dynamically, only the part that you are using, this is a great way to achieve the best functionality with minimum uh, 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 power consumption. Because you put exactly what you need, but today the problem is that the, the existing linker doesn't allow you to do it each time that you do something. You need to relink or reroute uh, everything. In the paper about the RNN, they claim that they developed tools to do it partially, which is the exact uh, uh, thing that I think that uh, at least we tried to do in the past. Uh, uh, most of them have the technology, or maybe we need to develop such a technology, but this is a great way to develop a very efficient uh, 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 machine learning algorithm uh, on FPGAs uh, in particular. I, I'm sorry, I missed you. Yeah. Uh, they have FPGA solution or they have ASIC solution? No, this is FPG. And the, and the first source, uh, you have a Solution that's called something 300. This is a, a, the I five the, millivolt. This is an ASIC solution. I did this. Uh, as far as I read, this is a PG as well. But I'm not sure. The, at least I, I can't recall right now. I think that this is a PG. Because again, you want to have the flexibility. Uh, the, the, the problem with, FPG, with ASIC is that if you produce something for one purpose, it is excellent. But if you want to use it for a range of applications, so at least right now this is not uh, general enough. So what people are doing, uh, uh, the reason that people are using FPGA is to produce something that will fit to a range of applications. And this is the reason that both of these products are going to embedded FPGA, which are not very expensive to produce, but gives you the flexibility uh, uh, this is high uh, if you don't know. Uh, okay. So this is a kind of uh, algorithm that they claim that they can do. This is uh, uh, nothing uh, uh, particular. Okay. So this is what I want to say about FPGAs. Again, from the research point of view, the capability to, to, to break the, your design into subsystems and then to dynamically connect them seems to be one of the big challenges. And it looks like that uh, uh, anyone who has this capability will be able to produce very, very efficient systems. 
By the way, the, uh, it is not here, but there are <coughs> there a, a lot of research about new types of uh, FPGAs. For example, there are people that try to produce analog FPGAs. There are people that try to, 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 to come with new structure for FPGAs. But again, this is a little bit out of the scope of uh, this talk, but there are many works that try to do something or in memory uh, computations or a, 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 to do something almost entirely in analog or to use memory stores and FPGAs, a, all this type of a, a new material and new devices are very, very attractive to, to reach a, a, a very efficient implementation on FPGAs. And of, of course on AC, but also on FPGAs. Questions? Uh, I think that I will leave soon if you have a question uh, for him, so this is the time to ask him as well. If not, let's continue. By the way, today I think that I'll, I'll take a short break in the middle, but we'll uh, go on until something like 5 instead of uh, 5.30. And... Uh, Okay. So, moving to ASIC. So again, everybody know what ASIC is. ASIC is just a custom design that uh, you uh, generate a chip if you like uh, by yourself. Okay. So ASIC in general <coughs> is more efficient than FPGA. <laughs> the problem with ASIC is usually that once you produce it, so you cannot change it. So usually <coughs> you go to ASIC when you know exactly what you like to do. So in many cases you find out, at least if you look at the history, that you start with something like FPGA, where people know what they like and what they do, they move to ASIC. When they really know what they are doing, they just integrate it into the, uh, in, in, into the code. So, for example, a, a floating pot used to be, a, in the beginning, a, a, a separate chip. So it was accelerator. Floating pot was designed as accelerator. This is amazing. And only later on, uh, uh, every, when you start having a standard for a floating point, so you integrate it. Uh, so this is the tradition. Again, uh, we need to be careful about power consumption and limitation, but in general, this is the trend. Okay, so as it considered to be very, very complicated, but recently there are environments they try to allow you almost not to automate it, but to make it much, much more reasonable. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, the, the, the environment which is called uh, Minerva uh, is something that uh, uh, makes a lot, a lot of sense and uh, uh, make it, uh, not, uh, it is not easy, but make it feasible. Uh, almost to, to even a small company or uh, students to, to, to make an asset in a very sense, in a very efficient way. <coughs> so you start with some uh, 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 algorithm, the machine learning, for example, and they have a tool that uh, you run the machine learning, and then you go to the uh, architecture aspect. When you go to do you map it to your architecture, that point is something which is similar to uh, FPGA or to any kind of uh, hardware. And then what they are doing, they start by fitting it with the parameters of the real uh, hardware that you will use. Structures and so on, it is one chip, multiple chips, buses, etc. So now, after you make the, the accelerator design exploration, so you go, you design what is your architecture, you move to the architecture, 
And then in the architecture, they have what they call design optimization or architecture exploration. So this is an interactive algorithm that you are doing bottom up, which is the hardware uh, in modeling and the power modeling, etc. And you also uh, uh, do the analysis of the accuracy and uh, 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 you design data type, quantization, for example, and operation pruning. It. This is an example of a specific algorithm, but iteratively you simulate the system all the time. You get the power performance area. And they have a set of tools that allows you to, to, to do it almost automatically. You change the algorithm immediately, or the mapping immediately, you get the results. And then after you finish all this uh, 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 part, you have the final optimization and layout, and you go to chip layout and validation. And from this part, it is automatically go to uh, 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 synthesis, mask, netlist, and you can produce it. In the past, to produce a chip was very, very expensive. Today, the, uh, if you can or if you can allow yourself to produce it in not in the, the very latest uh, processes, the point is the fabs are getting out of business very soon. And there are many fabs that allows you to manufacture things in process which is three years old, five years old, in a very, very inexpensive uh, way. So for many, uh, at least at the developing stage, many times it is really not expensive to produce your own chip on uh, such a, a, a FAPS. And by the way, some companies decide that it is better for them, for the ROI to develop it on less expensive uh, 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 FAPS and uh, to have less expensive uh, 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 chips. The trade-off is, of course, it, it is old fab, so the area is larger. If the area is larger, the yield is less good, and it has some other costs that you don't count. But so this is the balance. But if you just want to develop and have your own chip, so this is visible today. It's uh, uh, not very expensive to go and to produce your own chip and uh, uh, actually to, to go to the market. Okay, this part is uh, very interesting because we are uh, uh, the, 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 maybe the most uh, uh, famous ASIC that exists today is the tensor processing unit of the TPU uh, that Google uh, announced. Actually, uh, this is the second, right now, this is the second generation. We will not go into all the details, but uh, this is extremely interesting because, first of all, the group of the people that work with it are excellent people. Uh, most of them people that came from both academy and uh, senior researchers, etc. And uh, I think that this is a, a very interesting work. More than that, uh, today you can uh, use, uh, you, you can rent uh, time in the cloud. And in some of the cloud, they also provide you the ability to access the TPU uh, on the cloud to examine your algorithms uh, there. This is the only way that this is available for the public? Just right cloud? now, as far as I know, yes. The point is that they already demo uh, 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 this part in totally different area in one of the competitions in Go. Uh, they got an excellent result. And then everybody was amazed and said, yeah, this is the TPU, it was before they announced it. And in some of the competition of a, 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 a autonomous car, a, a, they used something similar. But that time, I think, I'm not sure, I think that it was the version on FPGA because they developed it on FPGA. And this was a kind of test to, to, to test the algorithm, the ideas, and then they produced the, uh, uh, the AC uh, itself. So. The, first of all, they go to quantization, and this is the graph that they put to explain that uh, although in floating point you have this uh, very nice curve, so if you just use 8 bits, so you get something which is jumping, but, but it is good enough for uh, inference. But uh, it is not good enough, as we know, for learning, and then in TPU2, they are using 
a 16 bits, and the assumption is that this 16 bits are a, a some light version of floating point, so it is something in between. Uh, again, I, uh, I don't have enough information of it, but this is the assumption. This is the graph that we show about the trade of when the move uh, to a, a eight bit quantization. In the work that we are doing here, we show that for inference, many times four bits are enough if you are doing the training in a proper way. And this is part of the PhD of uh, uh, Khan and uh, some other people are working on this. So, this is just, a, a, this is quite all the uh, much better results to show the trade off between the, the number of bits that you are using uh, uh, in the weight and the accuracy uh, uh, that you are getting so they compare uh, the error rate uh, uh, in compared to uh, uh, if you do the same work with 32 bit uh, floating points. So you can see that 8 bits are quite accurate. When you move to really binarization, uh, uh, you can get a 20 or 30 percent off, which is quite a lot. So the, 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 re the understanding is that uh, going to binarization uh, doesn't buy you uh, enough accuracy, but on the other hand, a combination of uh, 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 binarization <coughs> and quantization uh, are good enough, and this is called a mixed mode that some of the, the, the layers are dedicated, uh, we are using four bits, some of them we are using one bit, some of them two bits, and the question is all the time how to uh, 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 use them and uh, uh, how to save uh, area. Uh, some interesting uh, 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 question here is that in all the, the uh, right now for all the layer we are using the same amount of bits, but it is all clear that there are uh, areas that the bits are more meaningful and areas that the bits are less meaningful. There is not enough research to, to, to try to uh, do the same things, but inside the, the layer itself and try to save bits uh, 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 there, uh, which will be a very interesting uh, 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 research. So, this is the structure of the TPU that they build. And what they have, the heart of it is a matrix multiplying a, a unit. And this is a monster. This is based on very new technology that was designed about 30 years ago. It's called historic arrays. But uh, uh, this is something very interesting in computer architecture and architecture in general, that we have some kind of will that uh, something which is very hot become obsolete and then people find, oh, this is a great idea and bring it back. So right now they find a way that this is exactly fit to what they need because historic arrays and the way that they build it is an excellent way to do a lot of algebraic operations. So they have the, the weight before that we see right now on the curve for the DPR the flow to the weight P4, and we have the unified buffer where the picture and everything and intermediate results are coming, and both of them are coming to a huge array of MAC, which are multiple uh, uh, end devices, and uh, uh, since the build it, we'll see the next uh, slide in a very sophisticated way, so this is very, very power efficient, and it provides them a lot of performance. Uh, especially a uh, power performance. So this is the general structure of it, and you see that it has a major, uh, it has matter multiplying unit, which is uh, has uh, uh, it can do operation on uh, 256 multiplied by 256 matrices, which is huge, uh, and uh, which means that they have uh, around 64k LUs. Uh, in the system, and uh, but they are using it, uh, eight bits operation. In the second generation, they shift to 16 bits again. The assumption is that this is not integer, but this is a kind of a, a, a floating point. We'll see a, a little bit more detail 
in, in. So, the ISA itself, the social self architecture of it, it is a cis-secondary architecture. Again, the World War VI, this uh, 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 complex social self architecture moved to risk. Now they move back to CISC, and the CISC architecture, they have a such a read from horse, read weight, matrix multiply, which is one instruction that gives you the ability to have BB, the machine dependent multiplier, by 256 output, and it takes you B, a pipeline cycles to complete, but on average, each cycle you complete another multiply of matrix. 256 by 256, on average, every cycle you finish a uh, operation, which is amazing. And uh, uh, you have activation that they have a, a special hardware that works on the unified buffer and can do non-linear operations uh, uh, on the results. They don't write uh, mention exactly what, but we know what uh, the option usually, and they have the right uh, host. Then they also have other operations that uh, uh, I didn't put it like read, write, uh, set configuration, and uh, synchronization, interrupts, uh, debugging, etc., etc. But in general, the, this five instruction, this is the heart of the, the design. So, the architecture itself, again, the heart of it is the unified buffer which gives you 24 million uh, instruction, uh, million uh, bytes. Uh, it considers 30% of the, uh, the area. And the matrix uh, multiply a uh, unit, which uh, considers about 24% of, uh, uh, of the area. Now, the matrix multiply, unlike, and I have a slide uh, about it later on, I like the regular way that we operate LUs that go to register and read, write, etc. We know that we lose much of the power and the timing for reading and writing from a, a memory or register. So what they are doing here, they just change it like in data flow. So they allow to flow from one multiply to another multiply and create a chain of operations and this is the reason that they can be very, very, very efficient. And then they use the algorithm that were produced 20, 30 years ago for solid current, that this is exactly what they are doing. And so they use a, 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 a old a knowledge and a, a just put it in a very, very smart way a, a, in the system. So what we end up is that uh, they have been a minimalistic hardware, they don't think a cache, the dotted branch position, the dotted auto mode. This is very similar to the GPU uh, architectural design because, again, if you do just multiplication, you don't need branch position, you know exactly what you are doing. You have the flow. And they can uh, do blocking, they can do, uh, the control is very sophisticated. The control allows them actually to, to implement very sophisticated uh, structures and algorithms. On this one, and you as a user, you have some kind of libraries that you just don't tell the system, do multiplication or do some other operation which are allowed at the higher level, and then it will translate automatically into this structure. The, some of the drawback uh, of this structure that it is very good as long as your structures can be divided nicely by 256. If you try to take anything which is not so you're losing a lot of uh, uh, operation. All these boundaries and so on are very, very complicated and uh, it is very, very difficult to implement something which is not exactly uh, 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 to, the, to the power uh, of something that which is divided by 256. So this is some of the limitation of the algorithm, but as long as you're using it, uh, it is quite efficient the way to, 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 to implement the system. So, again, they have a lot of work about the weights uh, because they need to balance the, the weights and the, uh, uh, and the, the, the uh, operation. 
And in the paper itself, we give a very detailed uh, analysis and they show the, 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 uh, uh, the flow uh, of the weights and the flow of the operand and the multiplier. And this is the reason that they get into uh, the, the structure of 8 uh, giga uh, instruction per uh, 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 giga bytes and uh, uh, why they are using 24 megabyte uh, on chip unified buffer because they realize that what they really need in order to, to do blocking in the right uh, way and to balance the system is uh, something like a 12 uh, 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 megabyte. So why they're putting 24? Because they want to do double buffering. So all the time, the DMA is read and write from one section of the, bar, uh, of the memory and the computation is go to the other section so you balance between the transportation and the computation and then you balance your entire system. And so the, uh, again, the, the, in the paper they have a very detailed description why they choose it. And remember that if you build something for yourself, <coughs> if you choose, for example, to use a different binarization or quantization and you are using less bits, it means that all the balance that they uh, provide may be changed. And then maybe you need to build your system differently. And again, each one, each time if you change some of the parameters, for example, it doesn't divide by 2, uh, 256, you need another architecture. So we are in the era that actually we need to tailor the solutions to the, uh, to, to the architecture, to the algorithm, which is very interesting from our point of view as academia, and uh, it is very challenging for the industry uh, or for the, 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 the in practice to use some of these algorithms because if it fits well, it is wonderful. If it doesn't fit well, you are in trouble and many times you need a lot of knowledge in order to get a, a good uh, performance uh, out of these uh, systems. But again, the idea and the design is excellent uh, for their purposes. And this is the chain of values that I discussed before in order to, to, to get the good results. Saying that, this is good for matrix multiplication, but if we want to expand it to other purposes, so most likely we want to go to other type of architecture, for example, data flow architecture, or other type of architecture. And this is, again, a very hot topic of research in the computer architecture today, how to implement uh, efficient algorithms. Uh, so of course we can do it on uh, FPGA, but FPGA also has their own internal structure. Maybe we want to build a different FPGA that can fit better to machine learning. This is a very hot uh, topic of research uh, uh, today. So this is the description uh, uh, of the, the uh, historically, you see that you get uh, uh, this information that comes from the, the unified. You don't see that you get, this, you get something that comes from the, the top, and these are the weight that you are getting. And then the flow uh, uh, is uh, uh, left to right and top down uh, in order to get uh, the, the wave of the computation with a minimum a, a need to go to register and to read something from outside. Again, this technology in very high level was developed uh, 30 years ago, but then nobody knew how to use it. Right now they have an excellent example why it is so important. So, I'm not going into all the, 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 the details, and the, but the main uh, interesting is that, uh, uh, <coughs> again, this is the explanation why they choose the four uh, K, the, but if you're using the mix 8 bits with, uh, with 16 bits, so up or vice versa, so actually uh, uh, you go to half speed, so mix precision. Uh, uh, you go to half speed. If you do 16 by 16, you go to quarter of the, the, the speed. Again, it is not that you go to quarter to the speed, but it takes you four cycles, and most likely with some dependency inside. So uh, every four cycles, 
you uh, finish the execution, and it is not pipeline inside, so the effectively you go to, to a, a quarter of the a time. Uh, but again, you need the 16 bits usually for learning. And TPU is used for both for learning and for uh, 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 inference. For inference, they use only 8 bits. And more than that, in inference, the, the memory, uh, the weight in memory is used only as read only because you don't need to write anything. So it can be even more efficient. So uh, the TPU tool was try to address all the issues of a, a learning and not just the inference, and this is the main difference. This is a great point for research. All this uh, uh, works, assume that you have a dense matrix. What happens if you have a sparse matrix? We know that in machine learning, usually we're dealing with a sparse matrix, so at least you don't have a fully connected, so you don't need the dense. So this is a uh, research, even in uh, Google, uh, maybe they have a solution, but they haven't released it. And uh, by the way, I'm not sure that they have a good solution, otherwise I assume that they will uh, publish it. So, performance-wise, these are the numbers that they uh, uh, show. Uh, this is a ratio of uh, CPU to TPU to TPU to a, a GPU or to CPU, etc. I'm not sure that I would. Uh, is higher is better? Higher is better. Higher is. Uh, it depends if this. Uh, yeah. GPU to CPU, if uh, again the baseline is uh, the. Yeah. CPU to GPU, you want the GPU to be as high as possible to show that it has benefits. TPU to CPU, again, higher is better. Yeah, in general, uh, higher is better than uh, everything. And the uh, interesting is the TPU to GPU, uh, which is the purple uh, line that you, th this is the real competition right now, uh, at least unless people will come uh, with a good solution for the CPU. So the really interesting is that the TPU versus GPU at that point, mostly for, I assume that this is for inference, it is 68 times better. Can you point to For this one. This one is? The purple, purple line, the, one, the, the right one is TPU versus GPU. Ah, it's, uh, the gray one. It's purple. Then the gray one. There. Okay, uh, 68. 68. Okay. And uh, these are different algorithms, uh, the performance per watt. Uh, uh, again, I published the, 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 the slide and you can read uh, all the, the, the comments and so on. This is the target workload, and this is watt per the operation. And uh, so if this is the performance, this is the power, this is the difference between uh, here, lawyer is better, so Haswell, and then the uh, K18, the TPU plus Haswell, and then uh, uh, we have a, what K20 is uh, Oh, K20, uh, 80 by itself, and the TPU by itself. So this is the TPU by itself, and this is the K20 by, by itself. In uh, each channel, you use both CPU and GPU. Uh, you get a result, but uh, again, uh, for some reason, they don't have Haswell plus TPU, and I can understand why. Because the, most of the power will go to the Haswell, and then they cannot shine in the comparison. Okay. The future developers, uh, it's not future right now, they, they use version 2 and they already put it as part of uh, the cloud. So in their cloud they have a rack, what they call a TPU pod. The terminology is to have a rack of TPUs and then you can rent a time that uh, 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 this is dynamically shared by on demand. So you as a user send something to, to this uh, 
a, a rec of a TPU, you get your share in the TPU, you can execute the algorithm. Uh, the main problem in this model is the communication, and now you depend on the communication between the CPU and the GPU because they are not co-located uh, in, in the first place. So, just going back to a slide that was misplaced uh, before, and this was, sorry, the challenges. So the main challenges in this area is that everybody is working on AH. But the main factor is how much software and to understand the communication, the connection between them. And uh, this is emerging market. So any time that you have a real good solution means millions or billions of dollars. So more than that, if we can produce uh, something like an AI accelerator that will be very, very low power, it will open up the opportunity to many new applications. And this is the reason that all the big companies are uh, 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 focusing on having a low power uh, machine learning algorithms. So right now we are limited to CNNs and things like that, but it is not clear that uh, this is the, the, the real problem. Because there are many other algorithms in machine learning, and for other algorithms we may need a different architecture, and again, from the architecture point of view, we can produce something that will be very efficient, and can run new types of algorithms, it can open the market, and it, 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 it is extremely important, and not just in the theoretical point of view, but in practical uh, point of view, it is extremely important uh, uh, problem to be solved. So, I've tried to, to, to do the rest quite fast, uh, because of the time, and so, by the way, here are a few references uh, of publication that they had recently. I'll try to, to make this part uh, quite fast, just to mention other solutions and other algorithms. So we have uh, in the Mobidius, Mobidius is a company that Intel actually bought. Uh, this company gives you uh, something that looks like a disk on key. You plug it into PCI Express, and you have an accelerator for AI. So such a stick costs you uh, today $99. And people are doing it, for example, in uh, drones and in uh, cars, uh, navigating cars and so on. Uh, it gives a huge benefit. Uh, right now that Intel is going into the uh, car business, in automotive, etc. So I don't know if this is a solution that they are considering, but this is a good solution uh, uh, for this market as well. Uh, again, the architecture uh, internally, they, they give a, a, a full chain of tools. So you come with that good in quite a, in a quite easy way. You train your system, uh, you find algorithm, and you get this uh, a, 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 a flow uh, of uh, algorithm that part of them are done on the CPUs, part of them are done on the accelerator, and you achieve a real-time uh, uh, speed uh, of the system. The idea here, again, very similar in some sense to the TPU. You have a huge set of processors, which are vector processors. These vector processors are connected to fast memory, and in the, in all the algorithms are uh, just a flow between the, 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 the memory and the fast uh, uh, processing unit. Uh, the, again, the interesting part is that uh, it is not just the solution, but uh, it gives you the entire flow of the developing. So almost uh, you don't need to be a very sophisticated user in order 
actually to take this technology either the version that comes with the stick or the edit car and just to, to, to expedite a, a new performance. A Microsoft, uh, this is a little bit a uh, mislead a uh, 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 slide because Microsoft has a lot of, uh, did a lot of research about uh, AI and VR, virtual reality. Uh, the only point that recently, I think that two weeks ago, they announced that they failed to integrate it into the next Kinect. Uh, but uh, most likely, they will, uh, sometime they will do it. Again, this is based on, most likely, on a special purpose and uh, uh, FPGAs. This is the assumption, uh, or this is what they, the, the clue that they, this is the solution they are providing. Okay. So, to sum up the, 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 this part of the hardware, uh, first of all, machine learning in general, in, in, in uh, XNN, the CNN, RNN, etc., the excellent example of domain specific systems. And if you have a chance to listen to the Turing Award uh, talk of uh, Hennessy and Peterson that uh, was given a few weeks ago in ISCA, so they also claim that the future of the computer architecture is, uh, or, or, or the computer systems, is around a, a, a new and better software hardware interfaces. They just give an example of some exercise that they did, that, but by just doing a software optimizations that can expertise a system in something like 60,000 times. And of course, in hardware only, when we get 10%, we are happy, and we declare victory. But if you put a, a, the software stuff inside, this is a huge benefit. Just to give you an example of work that uh, I did recently, we just took a, a, some well-known paper that uh, was published based on simulations uh, about a cloud uh, application, and we decided to measure it by using performance counters to see if the paper makes sense or not. So for some reason, we had to change the virtual machine because it was written in Java. And we realized that by just choosing a different virtual machine, we got 40% speed up. So we did nothing. By the way, for a data application, maybe the first virtual machine is better than the, the, the second one, and then this is the opposite. So the software has a huge, huge impact on the performance, and in domain specific, the combination of algorithm, software, and hardware, these are the key element. So even if you're doing something which is a purely a, a, a software base, if you don't understand how the hardware works, many times you will get only fraction a, a, of the performance or the power that you expect. And by the way, this is the same for a, GPUs and a, everything else. And the other thing is that from the, when you develop specific solution, Always, we need to balance with, with flexibility, performance, power, and time to market. And time to market is something which is very difficult to teach in classes, but in reality, this is something which is extremely important for uh, companies. If, if a solution takes you a year to develop, it is not practical. So, again, we need to balance. A good solution need to a, a deep understanding, and we said, of the domain specific. And uh, again, the material that we organize the course actually uh, are only the beginning, the tip of the iceberg. And uh, today, this is one of the most hot uh, topics, I believe, in the area of systems in general. And uh, I hope that, uh, first of all, that you enjoy the course, but also that you will continue the research in this area. So, questions? Uh, you mentioned the TPU that they are using external uh, 
four gig uh, DDR. Yeah. Can you and can you talk about the power that's at stake to bring the data uh, comparing to the power of the calculation? <coughs> In general, they, they, they didn't publish it. In general, we know that the power of accessing the DRAM uh, usually is even more uh, 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 is larger than the power of the computation. In this case, I'm not sure because you bring the data usually once to the internal structure and then most of the computations are done internally. So the main parameter here is the number of uh, operations that you are doing per byte that you bring on the, uh, on the, this is the main parameter that you try to optimize. Going to lower uh, quantization, for, for example, one of the things that it buys you, that when you read from the DRAM, you read many more weights, which means that the number of accesses to the DRAM is reduced dramatically, and then you improve dramatically the power performance of your system. Again, it also depends if uh, all the weights are organized properly, and you can uh, uh, read them as a group or not, but uh, assuming that uh, you're doing this job, so uh, uh, this is the key. You want it in one access to the DRAM to read as many weights as possible. More questions? Okay, if no further questions, so we'll conclude here. Thank you for coming to the cruise. Thank you.